planted by the warm waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Lift your voice and say it again. Hallelujah. I, I shall not, I shall not be moved. That's planted by the warm waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Let's do it again. Hallelujah. Yes, I, I shall not, I shall not be moved. Oh, I shall not, I shall not be moved. Just that's planted by the waters. Oh, I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. I shall not be moved. Just like a tree planted by the water, Hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Amen. Amen. I just want to sing my favorite song this morning. Amen. Can you join with me my favorite song? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This song, when my time on earth is ended, amen, amen. this song must play. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, Father I stretch my hands to
Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the house of God. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. There's no other help. I know. Oh, Lord. Family might fail you. Wife might fail me. Friends might fail me. Children might fail me. Oh, hallelujah. But Father. But Father. But Haba. My source. My sustainer. There's no other help. I know. He promised he'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He says, when mother and father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. I thank God that I'm in the hollow part of his hands. No one can pluck me out. I got to slide my way out. But I purpose to stay in the will of God. Because he's my source my sustainer, and my strength. Come on, give the worship team a hand in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before I get into the word or anything today, there's a, a, I was walking through, coming in just now, and there's a little a long lady in the back there. She touches me when I was walking by. And something moves in me. And it reminds me of Jesus, a woman with issue of blood. And when she reached out and touched him of God's garment, Jesus' garment, she would make hold. And I believe that I want to pray for this young lady tonight, right now, before, this morning, before I do anything else. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for this young lady that, that's touched me when I was walking through. Amen. We're going to pray that God's going to do a miracle in her life. Her life. Yes. That whatever is God did want to do with her. God's going to do it. Yes. So mommy, can you bring her up so she can come and we're going to pray with her yes. before Hallelujah. I do anything today. We're Thank going to believe you, God. Hallelujah. And I don't believe it's a coincidence Amen. why you read that scripture today, my brother. Yes. Amen. I believe that scripture was given me. Amen. Yes. Authority. Yes. Amen. To lay everything aside and to pray. Hallelujah. Amen. For this young woman. Yes. That whatever it is. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to ask as Jesus asks. Uh, amen. amen. Jesus asks the question. Amen. If you don't have that faith, don't come. Amen. But you have a faith today that God can release this woman. Yes. Amen. We're going to come. We're going to come if we have the faith. Yes. If you don't have the faith that God can do something for this young lady, don't come. But if you have the faith that God can do something for this young lady, come right now. We are going to lay hands on her. We are going to believe that God is going to bring healing to her life. We are going to believe that she will never be the same. Whatever the source is, God is going to fix it. I'm going to ask Sister Pearl to anoint her. Sister Pearl, anoint her in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask the mother to anoint her, somebody there with her to anoint her. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to believe God for a miracle today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Come on, come on, don't be fearful, don't be fearful. God is going to do a work here today in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit, the spirit of infirmity. In the name of Jesus, the spirit of infirmity will be God in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, 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 in the name of Jesus Christ. We believe in God right now in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, that you're going to set the captive free right now. 
Mighty God, remove everything, God, that's not of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus, we, we cast out every demonic influence in the name of Come on. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Come on, get up and cover. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe in God right now. Release her right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh, glory. Come on, church. Pray. Come on, church. Oh, God, we're asking you. Come on, church. Break every. Cover her, cover her, come on, cover her. Get out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Release her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of her in the name of Jesus Christ. Everybody sing, I hear the chains, I hear the chains falling. Do you hear the chains that falling? I hear the chains falling. Come on, sing, I hear the chains. I hear the chains falling. Chains falling this morning. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains that falling. I hear the chains falling. Oh, you're falling us this morning. I hear the chains, chains falling. I hear the chains that falling. The chains falling upon us this morning. I hear the chains, the chains falling. So we say, so we say, and break, and break, so break, so break them this morning. So break, oh break, so break. So break, oh Lord, I say break, oh break, oh break them this morning, oh break them in life, oh break them, oh break them, oh break them, oh break them, oh break them. I hear the chains, I hear the chains falling, oh I hear the chains that falling, I hear the chains. They're falling, they're falling, oh, glory to God. falling, they're falling, they're falling, they're Father falling. Father God, bring healing to this daughter right now, to your daughter right now. Falling, they're falling. Remove God. Remove the spirit from her, God. Set the captive captain free, God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Falling, they're falling. Principality of power. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. Oh, they're falling. Oh, they're falling. Say, oh, they're falling. Oh, they're falling. Oh, they're falling. Oh, they're falling. So there was power. Say, won't you be free? Would you be free from your burdens of sin? 
This young lady has been through lots. The force of darkness has overshadowed her. But we are believing in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That as she go from here, that she will not be the same, but God will cause deliverance to come. In the name of Jesus. You see, church, it's take unity yes. to fight Amen. the devil. Amen. We cannot have confusion in our thoughts. Our thoughts have to be fixed. Yes. Amen. Amen. The weapon of our warfare, it is not carnal, no. but it's mighty yes. to God, to the pulling down of stronghold. Oh. We're here and believe that even when it doesn't make sense, Amen. God will make sense Amen. of it. Amen. We are called to do our part, and he will do his. The Bible says, if any sick among us call for the elders of the church, and the prior of faith shall heal the sick. We did that. Hallelujah. And we're believing by faith. Yes, As Brother Hannan said, the mustard seed faith. Yes, sir. The quality of faith Amen. that we need yes, for God to manifest himself. Amen. He will manifest himself. Yes, sir. Amen. We believe that God will do his work. I hope they'll bring her again, especially on a Thursday evening. A Thursday prayer meeting would be a good time. My sisters, to bring her on a prayer meeting night. Amen. If you have the time, you can bring her on a prayer meeting night and we'll continue to pray yes. for her. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Trauma. Amen. All that in, in this child life. Amen. But God is a healer. Amen. Our Savior is a healer. healer. And some things we got to keep pressing. 
Amen. Jesus has to touch the blind eyes twice for them to have their full, for him to have his full eyesight back. Amen. Some things take a pressing, and we're not going to give up until the victory is won. We're going to keep praying. Amen. That God is going to cause healing to come to her. And she'll walk in this house one of these days to give a testimony of what God can do. Do you believe that, church? Hallelujah. 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 You got to believe. And when we believe, God will do the work. Amen. Because we believe that he is our healer. And he's our sword. It is Thanksgiving Day. Uh, for the world, it is Thanksgiving. But Brother Anand said it rightly. Every day for us is a Thanksgiving. Amen. Every time we wake up in the morning, it is Amen. Thanksgiving. Come on, let's just stand. Now we're going to declare the word of God this morning. Amen. And we're going to get into the word. This is, this is the, word the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. This is the word of God. We live by the word. We die by the word. Amen. Can you just touch yourself and say, I am called and chosen by God according to his purpose. I am called and chosen by God according to his purpose. I am called and chosen by God according to his purpose. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God is a good God. And in all things, we must give him thanks. I promised that we were going to look at the last verse. Amen. In regard to God's purpose. God's purpose for our lives can never change. No man can change God's purpose for your life. Man might want to change it. But no man can change it. You are the one that can affect God's purpose in your life. But if you walk according to his purpose. Then we will be victorious. Oh, yeah. Glory. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11 said, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, yes, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Hey, hallelujah. So it is according to God's will and God's purpose for your life that his will will be accomplished in your life. Amen. In whom we were made an inheritance. Glory to God. That opens up the whole question of the means by which possession becomes possible for us men. Amen. For people of God, we can only have a rightful position when we place ourselves in the capacity to receive it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So therefore our possession and our inheritance is in Jesus Christ. Amen. But we have to open ourselves up and make ourselves available so that we can have our Possession. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to, glory to God. Jesus Christ had died. That breaks the bondage on the which the whole world is held. So because Jesus Christ died, he died so that we can have access yes, to an, our inheritance. Because there was a time when we have the hurt for ourselves. The Lord gives us this hurt that we should dominate the hurt. But there comes the devil that comes in and we gave him what not even ours to give. So he became the ruler 
of this earth because man has given over what God has given them to him. So Jesus Christ had to come back and redeem us back to himself. Oh, hallelujah. Because we first belong to God, but then we give ourselves over to the will of the devil. God gives a commandment, we break it, and allow the adversary to take possession. Because now he starts to dictate. The Bible says we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. So we were born in this world under the influence of the devil. But Jesus Christ came into this world to give us our rightful inheritance to bring us back to him. So today in Jesus Christ we now have our inheritance. So we today have the Holy Ghost that possess us. To lead us, to help us, to strengthen us. Oh hallelujah. So that we can have our rightful possession that we are supposed to have. Hallelujah. Remember in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, they were walking in the cool of the day. And they were talking with Jesus, with God, in the cool of the day. Why? Because we, the spirit man, were connected. So because that we were connected to him, we were, be able, were able to communicate with him. But when the devil comes in and suffer the relationship and kill that relationship, guess what? We did not have access. We have lost out on our inheritance. We have lost out on our communication. We have lost the spirit of God left us. But thank God for Jesus. <clears throat> Through Jesus Christ, we now have our possession. This is the best thanksgiving we can ever have. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. Our thanksgiving is about the gift of eternal life. Amen. Our thanksgiving is the life, the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Yes. Our thanksgiving that we are no dead in our, no longer in our sin and trespasses. Yes, sir. But through Jesus Christ, we have life and life more abundantly. This is a day that we should magnify Ephesians 1 verse 11 knowing that we are in full possession of our inheritance. Because the Spirit of God now lives in us. He possesses us. Christ has died that break the bondage under which the world owe us. What the devil had on us, he had it no more. We are now free and we can walk in our inheritance in this life and in the life to come. You see, we normally, we don't get our inheritance before until we die. Until the, the, we inherit it when the person died. Yes. Jesus Christ died yes. to give us our inheritance and in him now we have it because now he is alive. So our inheritance is not a dead inheritance. Oh, hallelujah. We can live in our inheritance now. And when we die, we're going to have a greater inheritance. Because then we're going to be like him. And we're going to see him face to face. For the true slavery which interferes with the, the free service and the full possession of God is the slavery of self and sin. You see, that's the big endurance that's in our way today. When we so full of ourselves yes. that we cannot submit to the will of God in our lives, we are losing out our inheritance and sin in our life become an uh, endurance. But Jesus Christ has died. Amen. If the Son has made you free, he shall be free indeed. Oh, glory to God. You are free to receive your inheritance. What a blessing. Hallelujah. I am called and chosen yes. for this time Amen. according to his purpose so that I can receive my inheritance. What a day of thanksgiving this is for me. Amen. The knowledge of knowing that my inheritance is in God is enough for me. Hallelujah. It's the best thanksgiving that I can ever have. 
Oh, hallelujah. That great sacrifice not only breaks the power of cancer sin, but it also moves the heart in the measure in which we truly accept it to love and to surrender. Oh, hallelujah. To what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, we can surrender ourselves to the king of all kings. Yes, Are you surrendered to him? Hallelujah. Well, I have surrendered many years ago, and I'm still surrendering. I'm learning to surrender even more. Because many times we surrender only in part, but not in full. We must surrender in full. Sometimes we only surrender a part of our lives. But our whole being must be surrendered, including our pocketbooks. <laughs> Some of us, we surrender everything, but we come to our pocket pocketbooks, we hold it dear to our hearts. But when you surrender, we surrender all the writer says, I surrender all. I surrender. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. You got to get the place that you surrender everything to the king of all kings. The rock of all ages. He paid the price. He sacrificed for you and I. So that we can surrender all to him. Oh, glory to God. And so it is in him that we become an inheritance. It is in Jesus Christ we have our inheritance. That God comes to his eye right in regard to each of us, God comes to save us. He comes to give us rights so that we can walk back into an inheritance. What has been stolen, we have right to claim it and have access to it as of today. Hallelujah. As of the day you receive Christ in your life, you are now in right standing to receive your inheritance, church of God. You should not let nothing move you so that you will lose your inheritance. Because your inheritance is in Jesus Christ. And you have rights to your inheritance through Jesus Christ. And it is him that we trust. We trust Jesus Christ. That he's going to do right for us. Oh hallelujah. We have our inheritance in him. Our inheritance is in Jesus Christ. We are here with him. And joined here with him. Hallelujah. Oh hallelujah. When we come into the house of God. We come knowing that we have access. Yes, sir. We come knowing that we are joined here with him. Amen. Knowing that we are kings and priests with him. Yes. Knowing that we are doing his will. Yes. We are his hands and feet. We are in right standing. So that we can carry out the work that he has given us. That we are in alignment to do his will. And our inheritance is in him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Oh, there's no other way, church. Amen. There's no other place that the Christian can have their inheritance. Hallelujah. Because the hurtly, everything that is hurtly is going to dim and lose its value. Glory. I want to leave an inheritance for my children. But the best inheritance I can give my children is the word of God. Yes, the best inheritance I give to, can give to my children is to leave them a place that they could go worship. Knowing that they have the knowledge of who God is in their life. And know that they can come together and worship their king. It is the greatest inheritance that we can give to our children. Because money won't last for long. They're coming, it's coming to a time now when money don't mean much. It doesn't matter what you have these days. It don't mean much. Many have so much money and they're still dying. They're still taking their lives. Because it means nothing. The only thing that's going to last is going to be a good salvation in the time that we are living in. Church of the living God. The only thing we are going to have is a good salvation. That's the only thing that's going to last. Money is going to pass. Wealth will go because sickness will come sometime. Many rich and they're sick and they can't even eat their money that they work hard for. They can eat the food that presented to them. Our inheritance is in God. Let's put our 
trust and our faith where it belongs. In the trust and hope that our hope is in Jesus, our inheritance is in God. If we would be meet for the inheritance of his saint in life, that's what the Bible says, we must unite ourselves to the Lord by faith. We must unite ourselves to Jesus Christ by faith. Amen. Brother Adam said, faith like a must that seed. We need at least that faith, the quality of faith that can move mountains. And through him, oh hallelujah, and faith in him, we shall receive the remission of sins and inheritance among all them that are sanctified. We need the word of God to sanctify us, to wash us and make us clean. Church of the living God, we cannot be washed and sanctified without the word. That's, right. Glory. That's the only thing going to keep us sane in this time that we are living. To keep our minds clean, to keep our thoughts clean. The only thing can wash it is the word. That's right. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. A person that's not reading the word. Okay, what are you feeding yourself? What are you washing your thought process with? The word of God is what will wash the thought process to make it clean. It's what sanctifies. I pity the Christians that don't read. Because that's why we have so many corrupt Christians today. Because they are not being washed by the word. You need the word of God to wash the mind the way you think. It needs to wash a man. Everything that you do, it should be coming through the word of God. It should be washed through the word of God, purified and sanctified through the word of God. And then the Bible says, you will be able to see clearly. Yes, sir. Because you first take the bean off of your eyes. So we need to read the word of God and apply it to our lives so that we can be what God called us to be. And so that we can receive our inheritance in him. Church of the living God in whom also we were made not have obtained an inheritance. Whose inheritance? God, the Christian community is God's inheritance. God's possession. God owns you. That's right. <laughs> the Christian community, the Christian church, yes. the true church of God, it is not owned by man. No. It is owned by the true and living God. Amen. Man want to take over God's Work and God, <laughs> and what God supposed to have, we want to take it. Today we want God's praise. Yes, sir. Today we want God's honor. Yes, sir. Today we want people to look up to us as if we are gods. Yes. But that's belong to God, Jesus Christ Himself. Yes. All glory, all honor must be unto God. Hallelujah. It is not about us. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Yes, sir. He is the one that we, are, we can have our inheritance through. And that's the one that we need to focus on. That's what we need to put all our hope in. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. The Christian community is God's position. The earnest of our, in, of our inheritance, the down payment, and our inheritance is in Jesus Christ. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. What is the Christian position? The same God whose position is is the Christian. So then there is a deep and wonderful relationship between God and the believer. Hallelujah. Today, the best relationship we can have is not with your wife. <laughs> it's not with your children. The best relationship you should have is between you and God. When the relationship between you and God is right, then everything else will be right. Amen. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. Because if you don't want to dishonor God, you will not dishonor your spouse. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. If you're not dishonoring God, you will not dishonor your mother and your father. Yes. But when you honor God, honors will flow naturally. Right. Oh, hallelujah, church of God. Ah, but if you dishonor God's plan for your life and God's purpose for your life and your inheritance in God, you will dishonor those around you. I walk into my workplace, I know that my boss is my boss that signed my check, but because I give honor to God, I honor my boss for allowing me to be in that workplace. Yes, sir. Because through him, I am, can pay my bills. Yes. Glory to God. So I have respect and honor for him. 
I treat him well. I talk to him properly. I do what I know is right because I know God expects me to do it. Church of God, when you're in alignment with your king, with your God, guess what? You will be in alignment with everybody else. Because if you first please God, you will please everybody else around you. It doesn't mean that everybody's going to be happy with you. But the life that you live will be pleasing. They don't have to accept it, but it will be pleasing if they choose to accept it. Glory to God. Because some of us don't like, many don't like to see us live Christian life. We like to wavery back and forth. Today I'm in, tomorrow I'm out. No, but if we live wholeheartedly and faithful to God, he will make a way. Right. I look at my life and I know because of my faithfulness, even on Sunday, many make sacrifices right. to give something to me. Many did not look at the fact, you know, and think that I have everything. Because sometimes people look at your earthly possession and think that you don't need nothing. But it's not about what a person needs. We don't give to God nothing because he needs anything. Do we? The hurt is his. We don't give to God because he needs it. We give it because we want to honor him and honor his work. We want his work to carry on. We want the gospel to spread. Oh, hallelujah. What difference when you give to your pastor? Is it because he have it, he look like he have everything? No. It doesn't matter what he has. It's the heart you have for your pastor. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have some people in my life that more well off than I do. But I honor them in whatever way I can. Because God placed them in my life for a purpose. And because God placed them in my life for a purpose, I honor them. I honor the, the, as young as Samuel is, I honor him. Hey, hey Samuel, yeah, Pastor Hannah, you're right, Samuel. You know, because it doesn't matter. There is something that we must do as becoming saints. Because Christ is our example. That's right. And because our example and our inheritance in him, then we are to live that exemplary life. That's right. So that wherever we go, Christ must be seen in us. Hallelujah. I heard the story of my brother. When he catch that fish, he bows down to pray. And when he looked up, everybody took their hat off. It brings reverence when you do the things of God. When you do what's right, it will always bring glory to God, not to yourself. Oh, glory to God. That's our inheritance is in Christ. And when he's happy, you are happy. Glory to God. We have some sad Christians because God is sad about them too. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. But when you're happy in Jesus Christ, then guess what? He is happy. And when he's happy, you are happy. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Because the Bible said, put on the garment of praise. The of with the spirit of heaviness. So when you're happy in Jesus, Hallelujah. then guess what? It is contagious. That's right. If you're not happy, how do you expect somebody else to be happy? Amen. Huh? So we as people of God, we are supposed to have the joy of the Lord. It's a part of our inheritance. Yes, sir. Do you know that? Amen. The Bible said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not according to the peace that the world gives. Amen. The world that it gives, it surpasses all human understanding. Amen. People will look at you when you're going through a rough time and you're still smiling. Why? Because you know the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. I'm exercising my inheritance now. <laughs> because I have peace, I have joy, I have contentment. Uh, when I'm supposed to be mad, my sister, I'm still smiling. Uh, when I'm supposed to be yelling and screaming, I'm, I'm calm. And my brother just looking back and just relaxing and said, God, you have this. You got it. You got it. Oh, hallelujah. I don't need to be boisterous. I don't need to get all shaken up. No, I just stay humble and peaceful. Yes. Why? Because he has it. Right. Because we know who's our source. We know who fights our battle. Yes, because we are in his inheritance. Yes, sir. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. He's a God of war and he'll fight my battle. Amen. I don't need to find. I just have to have peace knowing that he has it. He's in control. Yes, sir. You know, many would want to see many of us die, but guess what? God preserves us anyway. In spite of, in spite of eh? Amen. God's still working out for us. Yes, sir. Many of us should not be here, yes. but because of our inheritance in God, he says it's not time for you yet. 
you're still here. You, you still have purpose to be fulfilled because his purpose must be fulfilled in your life. Why? Because you're called according to his purpose. purpose, son of God, people of God. Surely that is the deepest and most blessed and most strength-giving conception of the Christian life. Hallelujah. Our faith corresponds to his faithfulness. Our faith in God corresponds to him, to his faithfulness. Why? Because he's faithful, we are. Because God is faithful, we are. You guys aren't faithful? Because God is faithful, church, guess what? You are? Oh, you're faithful in every area of your life? You see, many of us can't say we're faithful because some of us know we are not. That's right. yes. But when you're faithful in all here and surrender everything to God, then guess what? You are faithful because he is faithful. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Our obedience corresponds to his authority. Our obedience corresponds with his authority. When you're obedient to him, you're giving him authority over your life. Amen. Oh, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's why the Bible says obedience is better than sacrifice. It doesn't matter how much you give to God. It doesn't matter how much you talk about God. It doesn't matter about none of that. It is your obedience to him that gives authority over your life. When you're obedient to God, you're saying, God, take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my moments and my days and let them flow in ceaseless praise. Do what you will. I will obey you, Lord. You have given him authority over your life. Oh, hallelujah. When he said run, you run. When he said walk, you walk. When he said talk, you talk. When he said stand, you stand. When he said sit, you sit. Oh, hallelujah. Because your obedience to him, he has given him authority to move in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise his name. So we have to have obedience to him in order for us, for him to have such authority in our life. We are saying, God, I surrender my life. Amen. Take control. Yes, sir. I will do what you say to do when I have to do it. Amen. You are constantly listening to the voice of God. Hallelujah. Oh, I hope you understand what I'm saying. Amen. Our weakness lay hold on his strength. Amen. When we are weak and it looks like we are not going to make it, who do we look to? Hallelujah. We look to the hills from whence come it. Our help coming from the Lord, Maker. the maker of heavens and earth. When the body is weak and the spirit man is just propelling you. Yes. Because the spirit man is strong. Glory. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So we draw our strength from him. Amen. When the physical cannot, don't want to do anything. The spiritual, the physical is saying, I want to sleep today. Yes. But the spirit man said, get what? Guess what? You're not going to lay in bed today. You're going to get ready and you're going to go to the house of God because there's a blessing awaits you. Hallelujah. And you, you, you conquer the flesh yes, by being obedient yes, to, the to the spirit man that has more authority Hallelujah. in your life. Glory to God. Oh, we love you. Because he is your source. Amen. He is your sustainer. Yes, he is your strength. Yes, Glory. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Our emptiness is replenished by his Fullness. Amen. When you're feeling empty and you feel like there's nothing on the inside, just pick up the word of God and start fill up yourself with the things concerning him. And then you're full of life and strength and courage. Oh, hallelujah. We possess God and God possess us. We were made an inheritance. The earnest of our inheritance. He is our inheritance church. And we need to understand it. We possess God and God possesses us. What does that mean? 
Oh, well, it means plainly and cheaply this. A mutual love. Oh, hallelujah. When you love God, he loves you. And when there's a love relationship going on, guess what? It's a good thing. Huh? When God loves you and you love him back, right back. Huh? Because he first loved you and you love him right back. He's not going to do nothing to hurt you. You're not doing nothing to hurt him. Yes. You both have a good relationship, walking, talking in the cool of the day, just like it was in the beginning. So shall it be in the end. Yes. So you walk with God, you talk with him, and you have a love relationship with him, and you're laughing and you're talking, and people think you're nuts. Yes. Why? Because you're having a conversation with your king. Oh, hallelujah. You're laughing because you're looking at the what you've been through, what you've brought you through, and you're just saying, God, I thank you. And people are looking at you and think that you're crazy. Yes. Oh, you're not crazy. Oh, hallelujah. You're having a communication with the man you love, with who makes your life so beautiful. Oh, that love relationship just keep you bouncing. Oh, hallelujah. When somebody expects you to be depressed, no, he's giving you strength. I am happy. I am joyful because the relationship I have with my daddy can never fail. I can call him in the midnight hour. When wifey don't want to talk to me, he is his dear, his ears is open. Oh, hallelujah. When mother don't want to talk to you, when friends don't want to talk to you, he's right there waiting. Just said, come over here, ma. I'm here waiting. I'm going to take up my ears to cheer, and I'm gonna, I want you to spill everything to me. And he's just going to listen, and he's going to give you joy. The thing about God, he will not disturb you when, he speak, when, he, when you're speaking. That's why I like talking to him. He never bought into my inner conversation. He let me spill my beans. Yes. And then he answers. Amen. Huh? <laughs> because many a time I just, I realize that when I talk to God, I, I, I have my solution by the end of it. Yes. Huh? He didn't butt in. So I was able to spill my bean and right in talking to him, I was able to come to that conclusion because the spirit man is talking and I'm saying, yes, Lord, I finally get it. Yes, sir. I have been going through some stuff and it don't make sense and you see God pull some stuff on you saying, why now? But God already knew from the beginning that was going to be what's happening at that time. Yes, sir. Oh, God is a God that planned our lives for us Amen. from the beginning to the end. We just need to walk in him. Yes. We love him because he first loved us. Yes. Uh, then again, this same thought of mutual possession, there lies a mutual surrender. There lies a mutual possession, there lies a mutual surrender. Ah, uh, You surrender to him naturally. Because why? Because you're mutual, you, it's a, there's a mutual relationship. We surrender many things. But the hardest thing to surrender is our own will. When we get to the point that we can surrender our will to God, we have overcome every hurdles in our surrendering. When we can surrender our will to God, to give him up by constraint is slavery that degrades. To give, give him up we love is a sacrifice which sacrifices. You see, there, when you, when, when you want to take it, it's slavery. But when you give him your love naturally, it is a sacrifice. Sometimes we have to make some sacrifice to love Christ. Because the atmosphere that we are living in, it takes a sacrifice. It takes some work to pour in love. To give them the love that is due to him. To make time for him. To pray. To read his word. To go to the house of God. To assemble yourself together. Sometimes it takes work. Right. It takes sacrifice. It takes the love of God in you. Amen. For it to happen church. To give him up because we love him. Is a sacrifice which sacrifices. Even in our daily life. Huh? It's a sacrifice. Sometimes we get to hook on these television shows. That it takes a sacrifice just to go take the minute and pray. We watch the shows until we fall asleep and get up and go to bed. Now do you remember they exist? 
Oh, you're all right. Busy schedule, it takes time for you just to take a moment. Amen. Isn't it? Hallelujah. Just to take a moment yes, sir. and give God's praise. Yes, Church of God, and the love that knit us to God is not invested with all his blessed possession of him until we surrender our will. Said, not as I will, but as thou will. Yes, we need to surrender our will yes, and let him have his way. There is it not only mutual love and mutual surrender, but mutual indwelling. Right. You have to allow him, the spirit of God, to indwell us. Amen. He's not going to force his way in. Right. You're going to invite him in. Amen. And he will come and dwell and sup with you. He that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. Amen. And God is in him. Amen. Jesus Christ has said the same thing to us. I am divine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me ab bringeth forth much fruit. He that dwell in God, possessing him, dwells in us, possessing us. We dwell in him. He dwells in us, possessing us. And that love relationship is awesome because we are setting up ourselves for our inheritance and our greater inheritance, eternal life. What a God. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. Amen. Glory to God. Can I share a couple more minutes here with you? Glory. We dwell in God, being possessed by him. We dwell, he dwell in us, being possessed by him, by us. And he moves in the heart that loves. As the master walking through his house. Huh? You want to be able to surrender to God. As a master walking through his house. Yes, sir. Huh? You, uh, you walk in your house because it's yours, right? Yeah. When you're walking into somebody else's house, you walk a little bit you're funny, right? You might want to take off your shoes. You want to be careful. But when you're walking into your house, what do you do? You walk in because it's your domain, eh? You walk in with authority. If you feel like walking in your shoes, you walk in with your shoes. If you feel like take it off, take it off. If you feel like jump in your bed, in your dirty clothes, it's your bed. Yes. Huh? Sometimes we're tired and we just want to crash, we just crash on the couch. But don't go into somebody's house and do that. You're circumspect. Yes. But when he has domain in your life, yes. huh? When his house, when your house is his house, right. you don't have to worry. He, he has access, he has authority yes. to walk in. He has full access yes. because everything is surrendered. Guess what? He just walks in and take up a board. Yes. Oh, sit when you want to sit. Yes. Cry when you want to cry. Yes. Shout when you want to shout. Yes. Sleep when you want to sleep. Laugh. It is, a, it is his house. Amen. When he takes ownership. Yes. So we got to give him authority. Oh, hallelujah. The master walks you through his house. As the spirit is pre present in the temple. And as the soul permeates the body. And as the sight to the eyes and forces to the harm, and swiftness in our feet, so the indwelling of God's breath through all capacities of our life. He should be free to move in every area of our life, in every, every part of our life. He should have that access to be able to move. Uh, the indwelling breath breathes through all capacity of our life, and all the desires and all the needs of the soul which he inhabits. And make them all blessed. God, God wants to bless us in every area of our life. Every area. Desire and all the needs of the soul which inhabit. Make them all blessed. God's possession of us demands our consecration. We are not our own. We are bought with a price. Therefore, to live for self is to fly in the face of the very purpose of Christ's missions for our life. And uh, God's com communication of himself to us. The live, to live for self is to die. That's right. I want you to get this. That's why I want to get through this. To live for yourself, yes. you die. Yes. To live to self, to die to self, right. you live. I want you to note this church. 
To live for self is to die. To die to self is to live. When you're living for yourself, you're going to die. But to die to self, you're going to live. <laughs> yield yourself to God, for he has yielded himself to you. He can descend, come on church, God can descend and come down to a board with us. So that we can have communication. And he's saying, if you yield yourself to him, you should because why? He said, I heal myself to you. I can descend to bring you up. And in healing, we realize our largest and most blessed possession is a good bargain to give God myself, I myself, and to get God. You see, when I surrender my life to God, to have God. Amen. I give him myself so I can have him. God. What a blessing. Amen. It worth, what's a bargain? Amen. It's a bargain. You give yourself to God and guess what? You have him. That's right. <laughs> it's priceless. Amen. You give yourself to him and he gonna, you, you have him. Wherever you go, you walk in, he's there. He lives on the inside. He moves with you. He breathes. He controls all the beings every year of your life. He is, is in possession of it. He's taking care of it. He's sanctifying you and making you whole. I want to live a good life because I allow God to possess me every year of my life. There's no year in my life that I withhold from God. Everything belongs to him. I surrender everything, my will, everything. And I want my brethren to do the same. I teach you the way I teach you because I want you to understand how important it is for you to give yourself to Christ. Let him have his way. There's no good thing he promised he will withhold from you. No good thing he will withhold from you. He'll give you a good husband, he'll give you a good wife, he'll give you a good job, he'll give you a good church, he'll give you a good family. He, he, he wants everything good for you. But the devil wants to destroy it. The devil wants to be a dictator in your life. But church of God, we thank God tonight. We thank God today that God's possession of us not only dominates, demand consecration, but it ensures safety. Remember that great word? No man able to pluck them out of my father's hand. God is not a careless owner. He loves his treasures to be blown, bl blown by every wind and finched by every petty robbers. Nobody can hurt you. Nobody can rob us. We are in his hand. He's not careless. We are his treasure. Right. Hallelujah. We are his treasure. That's the takeaway today. We are God's treasure. We are God's treasure. And most of all, God has good pleasure. God has preserved. He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. They are mine, said the Lord, my jewels in the day which I make. But our security demands our consecration. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. No. But you can whittle yourselves out of your father's hands. Eh? You can whittle yourself out if you will. And the security avails only so long as you realize that you belong to God. We are living not for ourselves, but we are living for God. Possessing God, we are rich. There is nothing that is truly our wealth which remains outside of us. We can separate from from. But God possesses. He is not going to let his treasure be left in the grave. Church, you're God's treasure. If you live and allow him to possess your life, he's not going to leave you in the grave. And if possessed, then I shall pass through death as a beam of light. When death comes, 
You're going to pass through it as a beam of light. Death cannot touch you. And that is more than you can with money than anything else this earth possesses. When you die in Christ, death has no power because your possession is in Christ. Church of God, if you have God, you have the capital to commence a new condition, things beyond the grave. When you have Jesus Christ, he will not leave you in the grave. But he has given you everything you need so you can transition into eternal life. Isn't that what it's about? Hallelujah. What an inheritance. To be able to live in this life, inherit the kingdom life, and at the end, he prepares us and gives us everything we need. To transition into eternal life. Glory to God. Isn't that awesome? Amen. What a God. Hallelujah. What a, I love Jesus. Amen. Brethren, I love you guys, but guess what? I love Jesus more. Amen. I love Jesus because he will not leave me in the grave. He has made a way. And he's going to take me right into eternal life. I want us to remember and come to pray for Brother Philip's family as he lost a brother. Remember Deacon Beryl in Jamaica. I haven't called him yet. I'm so sorry, Deacon, if you're watching. Uh, I, so many times I'm tempted. To, I remember to call and then I just get caught up with different things. But I promise I will call you. All right. God bless you. Let's keep them in prayer. Let's pray for that young lady that, here to, that was here earlier. Yes, I think they take room because they didn't want to continue. You know, there's no distance in prayer. Amen. You know, we can see what's happening with that young lady there. We can see that something is going on there out of the ordinary. And God deals with extraordinary things. Amen. Amen. Huh? The God Amen. that we serve deals with extraordinary Amen. things. Amen. There's no impossibility in God. We just need to love him yes. and exalt him. Amen. It's thanksgiving. Praise and God. I thank God that we have Jesus. Amen. I thank God that he's our thanksgiving. Yes. He's our inheritance. Yes. We don't have to worry about all the pumpkins and all that stuff. We just know that we have Jesus. Amen. You know, I, I go by the store and they, they, they have so much pumpkin there. It's giving them away. <laughs> Jesus has been giving away for, for years and nobody yes. wants him. That's right. I know. <laughs> But now the pumpkin not selling the too good this year at all. They seem like they're selling them out very cheap. <laughs> but God never changes. Never. Come on, church. We need to give honor and thanks to God every day. Every time we wake up, it's thanksgiving. Every time we go to bed, it's thanksgiving. Every time we make it home, it's thanksgiving. Because there's no guarantee we're making it home. My brother, you fell out there in that water. God, it was the thanksgiving that God kept you because something could have gone wrong, gone worse. But God is a source of strength, a protector. I thank God for every one of my brethren. I want to give, come on, let's give Caelan a hand up there. He's now helping out. Yeah. Amen. With our camera and streaming. Praise God. Amen. And I know it's going to be great up there, right, Caelan? All right. Amen. Uh, uh, God is using his young people. And I thank God for my wife that allows him and, him and teaches him some stuff. Yes. And now he's just got to develop his own skills. That's right. Amen. That he's going to get better. Amen. I know my young people strive for mastery. That's right. Huh? That's right. My young people, they strive for mastery. Yes. Because I encourage them to be the best they can. Amen. The best you can. Always be the best you can. Because you must always... Be wanted. That's right. And you can only be wanted if you are the best Amen. you can be. That's, right. That's all I ask. Amen. Be the best you can be in whatever you're doing. Sure. And you'll be wanted. My grandfather taught me this many years ago. He said, Aaron, it doesn't matter. You're going to a foreign land. Guess what? Be wanted. 
Don't worry about what's going around. Just make yourself be wanted. Because if you be wanted, people will always want you. The next encouragement he encouraged me said, Aaron, don't chase money. Money will chase you. If you chase money, it will run away from you. So I grew up, no, I don't chase money. I believe that God will always bless me. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why I'm not a prosperity preacher. That's why I don't charge to preach, charge people money to preach. Because I trust God, whatever he's going to do. If he said you're going to bless me, you're going to bless me good. Amen. And if he said you're not going to bless me, then you have a reason. Yes. <laughs> you know, so we just have to walk in the fellowship of God. And my young people, I want to thank God for all of you today. <laughs> because you have made me proud. You're doing well. Yes. And I'm proud of you, my young people. If I have never said it, I want you to know I am very proud of my young people. And I know God's going to make something great out of them. I'm going to sit and watch them right here in this ministry. God's going to use them powerfully. Hey, Pastor Samuel, they're going to preach before I die. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. I believe God for that. I believe God for the future of my, ch my children. I believe that no, none of them will lost out by the way. Glory. I believe God will going to bring people in their lives yes. that are going to love him. Amen. Just love Christ. That not going to want to take them out of the, the house of God. Yes. But want to join them in the house of God. Amen. I want to believe God for that. Amen. We're going to believe God yes. for that church. Glory. That God, our young people, are going to prosper in the courts of God. Amen. They will not leave. Because of any reason outside. They're going to find everything they need in God. Yes. In the house of God. Husband, wife, whatever you need. Going to come to you right in the house of God. And we are thanking God in advance for that today. We are thanking God for that. Thank God for our young people. Thank God you're going to prosper them in this house. Going to prosper them in the kingdom. Yes. He's going to bring them in. Yes, oh, Kotoro, bo, 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 shada, ba, ba, ba. Nobody or nothing going to be able to move them or take yes. them out of the house of God. Yes, God going to give them mates that want to come and worship. Yes. That going to love God like they love God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. We're believing that and we're thanking God in advance. Hallelujah. The devil will not use anyone to weaken them. No. They're going to rise up above them. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, my young men. Look at them. Look at them. Look at them. Come on. Give them a big hand. Oh, hallelujah. They are our future. I love them. I pray for them every single day. Because they are my future. When I look at them, I thank God. Oh, hallelujah. Make me proud, daddy. I can imagine. You see, I try to make God proud. I live my life to please God. Because I want God to be happy with me. And I want my young people to live their life to please God. That God is happy with them. And when God is happy with them, God's going to work everything out for them. Jobs. Good jobs. Good position. Wealth and honor will come to them. Because they stay in the will of God. Young, my young people, don't be distracted Amen. by nothing that comes around you. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. You can join me and say that, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No, how the help I know. Oh, glory to God. Make that be a part of your songs. Amen. No, how the help I know. If thou withdrew thyself from me, where shall I go? When the struggle comes in my life, that's the song I sing. When the struggle comes, I stretch my hands and I cry out to God, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help. No other help. No other source. You are my source. You are my sustainer. You are my Haba. I look to you, Jesus. I look to you, Jesus. You are my inheritance, Jesus. My hope is in you, Jesus. Praise God. Father, 
I thank you for my people today. I thank you for those who are watching and watching. God, if they don't know you as your Lord and Savior, that they will come, God, to know and to make you their inheritance. Lord God, if they surrender their lives to you today, I pray, God, that they'll send us an email at southeastopeassembly at gmail.com. If there's any in the house here today that don't know Jesus and they want to accept him in their life, they can come today or they can stay right where they're at and they can lift up their hands and say, God, just lift their hands and say, God, pray for me. Pastor, pray for me that God will come into my heart. I thank you, God, for everything you have done and everything that you're doing, everything you're about to do in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you, church. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, la, ma, ma, ma.